where the French and Indian War started. This is a spark that started that war, which is known also as the Seven Years' War. It was a war fought between the British and the French that spanned four continents and three oceans. Big war. First of the World Wars. I want to give you a quick peek of the sign. This talks about the battle right here. We're on the National Battlefield Park. Uh, you can see the soldiers on that big rock right up there. And the, the, the French were camped right here in front of us. All right, here's what happened here. The French were in this area. There are 32, 32 troops here. And George Washington was camped not too far away in an area called the Great Meadows, which was a big open field. And one of his Indian scouts told him that the French were camped up here at the base of a big rock face. So George Washington, he wanted to come up here and see why they were here. He didn't know, he says this, he didn't know if they were spies spying on the Ohio country here, which the British claimed, of course the French claimed it too, or if they were diplomats that wanted to talk to him about being here. He didn't know. He admits that. So what happens is George Washington finds out they're in camp here. He sneaks up here during the middle of the night with a bunch of his uh, troops and Indians. The troops line up right there on top of that rock with their muskets at the ready. The French are down here just laying around making breakfast, half, half asleep, half, some sleeping apparently, unaware that um, there were a bunch of soldiers up there getting ready to kill them. Now, George Washington, he's only 22 when this happened, which I didn't realize until a few minutes ago. He had sent all his Indian allies down in this hollow right here because he thought that's where the French might try to escape. All right, here's where the story differs a little bit between who's telling it. The French say that they were down here, right here, all camping right in here, just waking up and rubbing their eyes. And all of a sudden, the British opened fire on them from those rocks. I mean, we're very, you can tell, I mean, that's 20 yards away. Opened fire on them. They killed, um, I think, 10 outright and uh, captured all but one of them. One of them actually escaped, took off, and uh, walked back to Fort Duquesne and told the story. Now, the British say what happened is the French were camped here, just waking up all blurry-eyed. And they lined the rock face up there with their muskets at the ready. But the French saw them, and they said, oh, the British are here. And they ran for the musket, so the British just opened fire and just started blasting away at them. Keep in mind, they weren't at war yet, okay? Well, the British were not at war with the French. Uh, this was a, still a time of peace. George Washington just blasted away and killed a bunch of people. Uh, some of the French tried to get away. They ran down a hollow. The uh, Indians started, uh, of course, attacking them, so they came back here and gave up. They're all sitting around here, bloodied and bleeding. Uh, and one of the Indians, I think it might have been Half King, uh, came up here to the commander of the troops and tomahawked him in the head. That was the uh, Unionville. That was his last name. Uh, tomahawked him in the head and killed him, which uh, really inflamed the, the passions of the French. And so the French came back here like a month or two later with a bunch of troops. And George Washington was only a few miles away at Fort Necessity. He built Fort Necessity. Uh, expecting the French to come, and they did, and they took Fort Necessity. And that's where we're going to go next, and we'll talk about that. But I'm just amazed at this glen and how small it is. And you can just picture the, uh, the, the troops just probably all camped right in here with their fires and laying up against the bank sleeping, uh, just right in this little area. This is right where they were. That was it. And <laughs> the British were right on top of them. They could have probably just thrown rocks at them and killed them. The spark that started the war that caused George Washington to build a series of frontier forts on what was the frontier of Virginia, which is a ways from here, it's probably 100 miles from here. One of forts was called Fort Upper Tract. And that's where the rest of the story is going. But let's go check out Fort Necessity and Braddock's grave. What do you say? We are now standing at Fort Necessity. This is the fort, the frontier fort that George Washington built Prior to the true French and Indian War, this is where it kind of was all starting right here, the spark that started the war. Now, interestingly, this is a stockade fort, probably very similar to what we're looking for at Fort Upper Tract. Let's just take a quick peek. These are the palisade walls that you're going to hear me talk so much about. Basically, it's just trees that are split or not split um, in, in the ground like that. In a circle, okay, it's going to, this is called a palisade wall. So typically they would have 
a couple layers of trees so that bullets wouldn't pass right through. That wouldn't work very well. Look how small this place is, okay? This is the inside of it. I forget uh, exactly how many feet across. Uh, I'll put it in the comment here when I figure it out. But it's a pretty small fort. These are the walls that we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for those post holes at Fort Upper Track. Because this should be what they built. Possibly with a building on the inside. Just to give you a little bit of history on Fort Necessity, which is a fort of necessity. Uh, that's what uh, George Washington called it. See this mound right here going around? Okay, this mound here is earthworks. A little trench behind it. Fort in the middle. There were 400 Virginia militia soldiers in that little area right there. This meadow was here. It was open like this. If you look on around the outside, you'll see all these little white signs. See the white signs? That's where the original tree line would have been. So this was a natural open meadow. Giant trees beyond those signs. And the French and Indians numbered 700. So basically, they just made a big circle around this little circle and just started blasting away all day long at 400 men in that little tiny area right there. Started raining during the day, and by evening, it was steady downpour. Those trenches filled full of water. Um, apparently, it was not good. Of course, all the powder got wet. Uh, sometime in the evening, the French signaled that they would like to talk to the commander who was George Washington and asked him if he would want to surrender and if he would say yes he would surrender they would let them go as long as they left the area they could leave and that's what they did all right that's what we're looking for Fort Upper Track should look like that because that's what old George that's what old George wanted them to build okay so that's all right so let's go ahead and get us all right so let's go ahead so let's go ahead and get back to the story of uh, Fort Upper Tract. I just wanted to see what it might have looked like. So now I'm standing on what is called Braddock's Road. And this was the original road that was built. And the road that Braddock and his army took when they went out toward uh, Pittsburgh to Fort Duquesne and were basically slaughtered. They retreated back the same way. That plaque right there marks where uh, they buried General Braddock because he was wounded in the battle and he lived to hear and died and they didn't want the uh the french or the indians to find his body and desecrate it so they actually buried it in the middle of the road right there and it was found some 50 years later by workmen who were repairing the road and if you look here you'll notice how the the banks come down here and come down here and the same way going up the hill so this is a very old road and it was probably used for a long time in fact, the new road, you can hear the cars are right over the hill. That's 40, called uh, Route 40. So 50 years after they buried General Braddock in the road to hide his body, um, workmen accidentally found it, and they dug him up again, and moved him up the hill a little ways, and buried him right there underneath that little uh, monument. Let's go look at that just real quick. And just looking down the hill, you can just imagine this would have been huge trees all through here. They chopped with axes to make that road. George Washington did originally, his, his troops. This is just where it talks a little bit about burying General Braddock there in the road. All right, that's probably close enough for that thing, isn't it? You are my lady, my big round baby, and I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy. She'll take the ring from your hand and bury it in the sand and keep it for eternity. Mother Earth, she's got her secrets she's promised to keep hidden in her dirt or deep in her creek. Mother Earth, she ain't saying exactly what she's saving, where it is or what it might be. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby. I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She don't care if you're dying or if you're living or somewhere in between. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby, and I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain.